Welcome to the Harder Shaft podcast. Today we're going to be looking at, I guess, the perpetual thought that we may have of what happens in a prison. When it comes to sex, I guess what happens in prison stays in prison. You know, a man can go in there, not have any preference to maybe having sex with another man. And once he's in there, life and everything around it changes. So we're going to speak to someone who's going to give us a bit of insight about what he's heard, um, I guess, when he was in prison. So I'd like to welcome to the show, Mark Finlay. Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, Joey. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for doing this. I know, you know, you're the first person that's reached out to me to be a guest on the podcast. So I'm really, I, that's exciting rather than me having to sort of try and get people to come on. So uh, I feel thank a bit you for being desperate, actually. <laughs> no, no I think I think that you just realise that you've got a really good sort of, um, you've got something really important to share about your story and I guess your experience. So I guess before we start talking about what I want to talk about, do you want to just maybe tell us a little sort of version of what happened to you in regards to how you ended up going into prison? Yeah, sure. So um, I have over probably this the course of a couple of years, I had my I went down the wrong track. I started um, you know living a, a unsavory lifestyle. Um, I using um, drugs and um, that turned into um, trafficking drugs. So um, those that that's that sort of lifestyle only ends up in two places. I either, either end up dead or into prison. So I ended up in prison. And that, so, I so can I? Did you think when you started doing those risky behaviors? Did you? Did you, I know that everyone knows what could happen, but did you think? That that's where you would end up. Do you think? That oh you yeah, would... of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I was very well aware, you know, that I, not on my level. Like I always thought I could get away with the innocent, yeah. like not go to prison. I would, you know, either be on a corrections order or go to rehab. I all I knew the system. I knew how it worked, mm-hmm. but you know, I I pushed it. Yeah, it, that was when I pushed it to the point, like just before the bail laws changed. From you know. Being, being going through bail three times and then then you get locked up. So yeah, you know, I, I I did it the fourth time and that was the charm. So <laughs> okay, and so when you got when the, when the actual information came that you knew that you were going to prison, yeah. like I guess the judge told you or someone told you because you had thought that you were going to get a, you know you thought mm, I'm going to get away with it. <laughs> what what was that like that that very first time you heard the sentence? Like you know, so the, the very. What, very yeah. first, first time I thought about it, which is when I was on my correction order and my lawyer was saying to me, this is your, you know, you're pushing it, you know, mm. you, we've got to keep doing it. And I, yeah, I would ponder on it and think to myself, you know, oh, if this really happens, I might be able to buy a can of Coke or go to, <laughs> you know, do, do any of that little stuff. So I did have yeah, a grasp on what it meant. Mm. Um, so... But I guess um, you don't really know until you. But there, you don't right? really know until yeah you actually. So yeah, you don't really even even though you know when I was pulled over on the street and the you know the officer arrested me and he says you know and I thought okay well I'm probably gonna have to spend a couple of hours in there which is the maximum I've done you do the interview and you know they get your details mm. and stuff but then when I spent the weekend in St Kilda Police Station and then got transported you know. Yeah. Um, and and you sort of can't, you can't just get it go, can't you? You just in there. Yeah, once you're behind that door. Yes. Um, and it's your, you, it's like, yeah. There's two two ways. There's no gray gray areas. So why, why don't you spend a couple of days in there? You're either going to be in there for a, a while, or you're you. If you're going to be let out, you'll be let out straight away. Right. So I'm just, I want I want to ask you a question more at the end yeah. because. You know how some people go into a prison and then they come out and they reoffend and they just have this life where they yeah. go in and out. Yeah. What do you think before you go into telling us what happened in there? What do you think caused you to make this really? Because I I know you and I know that yeah. you've done this massive turnaround into yeah. a different you know spiritual yeah. world. So what yeah. was the realization for you to go? You know, holy shit! I'm not. I, I can't be that person anymore. What was the What was the moment that you realized that? It's gonna sound really corny, uh, no. but 
I fell in love. Right. Oh, no, that's good. That's I fell in love and I, I saw... Was that, was, that out, was that when you were out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Afterwards, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so I, very shortly after I met someone um, and I, you know, about a year later I fell in love and it wasn't till probably another two years later that, you know, my lifestyle and what I was living then, you know, coming out of prison, you think you're a piece of shit and you want to go back, you know, and because it's not that scary and it, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's just the way the system treat. So it's, it wasn't as scary because you've been there. It were, yeah, I did. I didn't care. Like I yeah. just thought, okay, it's going to be a holiday. You know, no phone, no this. It's kind of like rehab, but you just don't learn anything. You learn how to become a better crim- criminal. Right. Okay. There's All no. Right, so so love love saved you, which is you know it's good because you know you hear so many things about people just going back and that becomes their life, yeah. right? So you were in a way. Do you consider that love, that moment, that in person, like, did you, did you consider that being a big rescue for yourself? Yeah, I saw the person I knew. I, I saw the person I was before I started to lapse and relapse. You know, yeah. when I was, you know, representing Australia for, in gymnastics, you know, doing in my, you know, before I, the drugs took hold, you know, the person mm. I was when I was a kid, when I was loving my parents and things like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, that's good. I mean, it's nice yeah, to, yeah. to know and that I, it's possible for our listeners because people definitely. sometimes doubt it. Um, can, before again, before another question yeah. we'll ask before we start: Do you is there a really big gap between what we'd see on TV shows and what is real? You know, do you think that the TV shows are close to it, or is there this fantasy fabrication of what happens in, in a prison? There's, it's, it's a true representation in the sense that, you know, what you see in the prison yard and how they act and to an extent, like, mm. I, I'll, I mean, I can't comment on what, uh, what's that women prison show? Um, Wentworth. Wentworth. I can't, like, apparently women's prisons are a lot worse than men's, but, you know. Really? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Um, oh. And from other women as well. Um and from men as well. So um, what you see is obviously acting and, you know, mm. it may be just my perception and that I'm a sensitive person and things like that. But, I mean, you see the real stuff happening. Like when you see men, you know, I mean, there, there are points that are on there are There are parts that every, everything's pretty much on point. But, like, yeah. to see... Well, to I guess, guess also when you see TV show, it's only snippets, but you're there every second of the day. Yeah. Which is and different. It, there's like, the emotion gotta... attached as well. Like, you know, going in yeah. there and seeing men when they get into a fight, you know, seeing the look on their face because that's the end of the road. Like, if you mm. make trouble in there, someone's going to find you. And if they don't see you out in the yard, they're going to come to your cell and then they're going to finish it there. You know what, Mark? If I if I was if I had to go in there, I reckon I would last one day. I and that, but see, that's the thing is that when you go in there. You mm. need to make yourself known to everyone else because if you hide in your system, I learned this very quickly. Um, I had, um, but yeah, well, that, first, I guess talk us through that yeah. first nut day and how you yeah. like. You know, you said you you were, you had yeah. to go. You were told well, like like how who how did you know what to do and how to act? Like how did you know what the would does someone come up to you and say say to you these are the rules or is it all like you have to uh, learn on your own? So going in there, you know, mm. I relied on what I saw in TV and things like that. So um, I was like, oh, my God, if I open my mouth or they get learn that I'm gay, I'm going to get bashed or I'm going to get raped or, you know, just shit mm. like that. So um, I just – There's no I lagging, didn't... is there? You can't lag. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not so much a – yeah, that's a, that's a very big rule. <laughs> um, but, you know, like – Going in there, my mm. fears were further exacerbated by the prison officers by saying things like, you know, because you're gay, we're going to have to think about where to put you for your safety, you know. Because right. so, oh, okay, I didn't think of that. So they know yeah. stuff and they could, be oh, the ones they, that te- they could be the ones that tell the inmates, can't they? Well, it's very much, no, there's a clear line. Like there's very right. much a clear line of us against them. There's no, if you, if you, if you fall in, if you go and do that, you need to do what they call is buzz up and which you go and tell them whatever you're going to tell them and then you don't, you, you know, I, I would see guys go into this room because they're giving information about whatever's happened like or whatever, and then you don't see them again and oh. they get put in solitary confinement because for their own safety. Yes. So okay. once that word gets out, then, you know, you see an ambulance 
leaving at the end of the day from the prison yard. Mm. So, you know. so you know, um, so mentally, like when you, I know that you're a pretty strong guy. Do you, did, like mentally, did you? Was there moments where you felt like that you were really fragile or really scared? Or I guess what yeah. were some of the things that you? What were some oh, of you're the dark? You're gonna make me cry already. <laughs> Um, so, well, I mean, I can't even, I'm just going to cry because I'm not even going to imagine, but I can't, you know, knowing someone that went in there, it's different to seeing it on television. And not, not to say I, I'm going to cry because of what happened, but, mm. you know, my mother passed away when I was very young. She taught me well. She taught me everything I knew. Like, you mm. know, she's, she's a very strong woman, like, you know, and I just remember her saying, if times get that tough for you, if you are shit scared of people around you, if you... If you need to do what you got to do, you you don't talk, don't make trouble. Keep your de- head down and work hard. Yes, and that's what I did. And when I, the first day in there, I befriended, um, I praised um, the the uh, Muslim culture because they they very much. I, as soon as I got in there, I kind of thought to myself, okay, well, I'm going to need to get out there because if you don't get out there and get known to people. Yes especially in a, a male culture. Um, and when men are locked behind closed doors, it's like a very upfront, you've got to go in there fighting. That's It's all very bravado, you know. <laughs> so if you don't get known, then people are scared of you, especially men. So they will be scared of you. So they will come and set, so seek you out. they're scared of you. They're not, they're not actually the opposite. They're not actually... Not, not, not scared of you in the sense where they're scared of your curiosity. They, cur- they, they want to know, they wanna know your story. If they, if they don't know who you are or if they don't know what right. you're capable of, they will come and find you. And that's right. the last place where you want people coming to find you. Right. Okay. And, and so is it – do you have to, like, tell them every, – like, are they interested you don't in, like, tell them why everything. you're in there? You just, you just, yeah. You're just going to, like, walk around the, the yard. Right. So how did you end up going with, the, with what you said earlier? Did, did they know you were gay? No, I didn't speak for, like, three weeks. The you only speak. person I spoke – I only spoke to – one person who mm. I was put near the kitchen in my, my unit. I was in the Melbourne Assessment Prison. I was put near the kitchen. And, you know, the Muslim men in there, they're, they're very peaceful men. They're, you know, in that environment, they they looked after me. And I, I, I put in there and I thought, okay, so I've got two options. I can stay in here. Um, and I immediately thought that wasn't a good idea. Or I can go out there and just weather it out and see what happens mm. and so i had to so i stepped out of there and i saw this guy in the kitchen he ran the kitchen um and i, I said to him i went up straight up to him i said look this is my first time i'm shit scared what do i do um yeah. and he said i was at, at the station shit scared. i said this is my first time what do i do he goes you're scared aren't you i said yeah oh. and he's like right clean this cell clean this cell clean this cell and we'll look after you Why? Wow, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, I'm, my head's going crazy right now. Like, what yeah. if that guy that you spoke to wasn't a good person? Like, you know, it's well, sort of well, like it's sort of like risk. Yeah. It's like it's fifty fifty, isn't it? You you don't know what's going to happen. It's very George. Just you've got no choice. Like you know, it's mm. and it's not like I, you know, you can go in there and be close to the prison officers because then you become a no. target straight away. But you even know, like three like people that talking, very... like that's that's like more than Vipassana. The Pashna meditation, which is ten days, you've done sort of like the hardcore version of that. We didn't speak. Like, so what did you what did you do that that you did just just ignore? Did I you just, just read did, or something? What did you do in that no, time? No, I it, my mind because I was withdrawing. You know, right. I was um, I you know, by the time I got to um, the Melbourne Assessment Prison, I'd spent two weeks in cells, like from St Kilda to the court cells. I was in there for a week, so. It was about two weeks before I, you know, ventured out and saw people again. And the custody cells underneath the courts, that's my definition of hell. Like, you don't see the light of day in there. Um, is, it just, is it just in the basement? It's un- in the, underneath. You just – and some oh. men have been in there for a year. Really? Yeah. It's very – I mean, did you uh, notice that? Did you notice, like, a, a, some men were broken, in, in, like, energetically? When I say it's the version of hell, like, nothing scares me much, but, mm. me, you know, the – the dark depths of what man is, you yes. know. It's like those movies when you see apocalyptic movies and when people take the law into their own hands, you know. Yep. They're, they're, the prisons aren't run by the prison officers. They're just there to manage it. 
the, yeah. the prison inmates run the prison. Well, if, you, if you, I'm guessing if you get a group of people together, especially men, and they're yeah. just managing it, so there's like a subculture, I'm guessing. So yeah. do you mind if we talk a little bit about the, you know, I just wanted to talk about what you believe to be the, you know, the truth or the the way that the sexual part of it. Like, for example, let's start off with something really simple. Like, like how do you feel men there masturbate if they is it like private or is it is everything open meaning I, you know I what I mean? like how, how do you deal with what you would normally do outside <laughs> or do you just ignore it so like you just, just i went like i you know even though as scared as i was yeah you know, I, I, I thought <laughs> to myself you know oh as a shower is all going to be shared like you see in movies or you know no it's not everyone gets like i got my own cell the whole time because of what? my status so you're on your and, own yeah i have my had my own cell the whole time, and because is of there my a mental... camera in there watching you? No, no. Um, right. Because of my mental health challenges in the past, I used try to use that, uh, you know, to try and get out of the whole thing. Mm. And then my lawyer said to me, she's like, when, when the judge gave me the sentence, she's like, and I was, I had my one visit from her, and I was like, get me out of here, just get me. I was crying <laughs> in that little box thing behind the glass, and she goes, you had to be stopped. <laughs> God yeah. bless her. She's well, up, I, I think in a way, you're, it's true, isn't it? Because I mean, do you yeah. think that you would Look, be where you are now if it wasn't for that experience? No. I'd, I'd yeah. probably be dead by now. I would have been dead. And my, post-prison, what I put myself through going back into active, active addiction, like I, I died quite a few times. Like I woke up in a lake, you know. The police said on their report it was a suicide attempt and it was anything but that. It was just... I was overdoing it. I was overdosing once a week, you know, for God yeah. knows how long. Okay. You know. So, um, so, so, so going back to the so, prison. So yeah. going back to the, the masturbating. Yeah. So you are you saying that you just were comfortable? I didn't. You just didn't do it at all? No. No, for the first. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I spent, <laughs> I spent a month in the Melbourne Assessment Prison, which I didn't do anything because withdrawing, you know. But if, if, I, if I got clean at stages before then, it took me a month before, you know, if I was with going through the proper process of getting clean it took me a month before i touched myself anyway so you know yeah. so that that you know i just didn't really think of it because i was just too scared and like too much going in on my head yeah you know so much i was crying every day um you know so you probably weren't really tapped into that sexual energy no, that you no so did you did you did you hear of like do you know the answer to the question say from the other yeah. guy's perspective like is it is it just because i can sort of imagine that say do people share cells or is everyone on their own yeah so, there, I mean, for the peop- people in my situation who have mental health challenges, they get their own cell. Um, yes. Or if it's like, you know, my, my, st- my HIV status and things like that. Yeah. And because I didn't, I, I didn't get my HIV medication for, I think, two months. Why? Okay. Um, because That's you know, if, you don't, if you don't know any numbers, you don't get to call. If you yeah. don't, you know, no one knew where I was for three months. So if you if you say something, they're not going to go running to get it. No, 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 no. You're not. You're not. There, you're not there to ask questions, and you know. So the, it's not a hotel. <laughs> and not 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 at all. Like it, the true definition of handing over. Not hand, okay. The true definition of your control being taken away is going to prison. Right. Like yeah. I had when I went, they released me to rehab and. People were in there who hadn't been through what I'd been through were like, oh, you know, I'm, I haven't got control and all this sort of stuff in groups and things like that. And so at one time I just blurted out, if you want to know what losing control is of, of everything, go to prison. You're made there to you sit down, you shut the fuck up, you don't ask any questions, and that's just coming from the prison officers. Yeah. I mean, do you know what would have happened if you didn't do that? Say that you were a bit of a troublemaker. How... Do you, know, do you have an idea of what could have happened to you? So I heard of a story um, yeah. of a guy who, so the people who do share cells, um, I heard a horror story, uh, and which makes me feel how lucky I am, um, of a guy, a new, a new guy, new young kid who came into, this, you know, into prison, mm-hmm. and this guy was just beating the fuck out of him for no reason. It was what, sorry? He was just beating the shit out of him for no reason, oh, every night. They- they all, they all were. No, just thought, so he was sharing a cell with someone. Yes. And this guy, one guy, was just beating the shit out of him for no reason. Do you reckon that, was there any, like, was he raping him as well? I don't know. Yeah. I just, I didn't, for uh, up until the week before which I started to become a bit more comfortable because I met people, I got a minder, 
mm. you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, and then, you know, you meet people in there through when you go through, I went through three prisons and you say and this, I, at that stage I made, made a couple of friends and they said, if you go here, if you're going to Fulham. So look for this person. But you don't understand in prison, like if you, <laughs> you go and say to someone, oh, do you know this person? What the fuck <laughs> do you know that for? Who, who, who wants to know? You, it's like you're starting a yeah. fight. No, you don't yeah, ask, yeah. you know, okay, do you know this person? Because... You know, you don't go in yeah. there to start fights. You're going no things go. And, and and do you when did you know? I know you weren't there for a long time, but do you feel? Did you ever feel like you could just? Did you always trust, or was there this thing in the back of your head that's telling you, you know, things can turn at any moment? Oh yeah, of course. So I was all, I was in remand the whole time. Even though I was in there for six months, I was in remand the whole time, mm. um, which means that your court date is way, is coming up very soon. You know, whether right. that be ha- what the court system looks like. You know. It was, and for me, it was six months. Okay. So, yeah. You know, I, um, I, I did get a court, I think, three times in the time I was in prison to try and, my lawyer to try and get me out, but they just like, no, no. Do, so do, do you think the six months that you were in was a good enough time for you to get a, an idea, or do you think you need to be there longer? Like, it's p- probably even no, a month, you, you they get would a vibe, have been, wouldn't it? I would have been, they would have been better off sending me back to rehab. Right. Okay. Because what, what, why is that? I was, I was I was shit scared of going to prison worse than death, even though I was my addiction was taking over and you know you know drugs are that powerful that yeah you will walk off a bridge. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I woke up in a lake, you know, and I did I, I knew I, what was happening, but I didn't know how to stop myself. So yeah, you know, um I was shit scared of going to prison worse than death, you know. That was it was I would rather die, you know. Yeah. So, 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 could, that, so I guess you can understand. I want to. I guess I can understand then how some guys would commit suicide in prison. Of course, yeah, and because it's that it's that extreme, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, there's certain places in the prison you don't is you don't. I uh, where that so that when you go into when you first go in, one of the really dark places other than the mm. custody cells is the psych ward, right? And that's a place where. It's anything less of torture, like physical torture, like, um, you know. Um, yeah, so, this so, the first so it's week, sort of like it's sort of like criminal, criminally de- de- like mentally. You wouldn't, like as far as the same tribes. goes, and yeah. I wouldn't even do this to animals. You wouldn't treat animals that way. Wow. Yeah. Like, it's so, like you see in the movies in the old days. Like, you get yeah. fed twice a day. They strip you of your clothes. You get put into this cell naked. You... Mm. Um, there's a, a mattress that has that's got blood all over it. You don't get any toilet paper. You, you don't. Know. No. Um, what do you mean? What I, do I, you got, do? I got I got a, I got probably about six sheets of toilet paper for the whole weekend that I was in there. Oh my god! I didn't get a shower at all. Um, so they and, do that on purpose, you think? Well, I got so when you get there, the first week you're in there, mm-hmm. you um, the nurse comes to chat to you. So and this my nurse in particular had did have very broken English um, and, you know, I mean, regardless of what what their English is like. So I'm very honest with my doctors, like, you know, when they ask you those questions that, you know, have you tried to hurt yourself, you know, harm yourself? And way back when I was a teenager, yeah, like I, that I had my mental challenges with that bad that, yeah, I did try to harm myself. But so it, it just comes out like normal because I'm very honest, you know, I'm very, I believe very much be honest with your medical team because, if you to get the right help, you need to be transparent. So mm. I said, you know, back when, way back when, and she somehow construed that to I was going to harm myself. Oh yes, so That's what I was thinking when you were saying that. Yeah, I'm the going, person, how they, and how do they do that? They put you in a ward. The person who looked after me, he came in. I was just in my, I I just gotten my food. <laughs> like you get to shop once a week at the canteen there. Just gotten this food that to like you know comfort food type of thing because. You know, it's the, the first time I got it. And my, the guy who was looking after me come in, he goes, right, just, just you, they're going to take you to a place where you're not going to like. And you, all, you need to, all you need to know is that you'll come back. And right. he, um, oh, so next gosh. thing I know, I had five prison officers come into my cell saying, grab your stuff. Yeah. Um, I grabbed all my food and I was led by five to ten prison officers up these days into South Ward 13 or something like that. 
Um, and I got up there and they told me to take off all my clothes. I've got like five, ten, five, ten prison officers standing around me just, you know, saying, saying, doing whatever. And then um, they threw me into this cell. This cell's like, you know, there's no heating in there. You know, at one stage I went purple because it was so cold. I was, yeah, when they first put me in there, I was yelling up hours, hours, because they wouldn't tell me why I was in there. Like I didn't click oh. as to why. Yeah. Why? So I was there's no there. like, there's no explanation, and there's no. no you know, you figured out later that she no. took that information. That was later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So it's, it's sort of like the, there's no. But they don't actually. It's sort of like they, they make the decision, and then if anything's wrong, they. Oh, just, you know, there's no, there's no like calling your family to tell you where you are. But not that it's like there's no. There doesn't seem to be a system to sort of. Like that was a mistake, I'm guessing, right? With the, with that lady. That was a whatever whatever it was. It was yeah. I'll be honest. Like I was in hospital once, yeah. and I was having a bad day. I was in there for a month, yeah. and I did the same thing, yeah. right? I just simply said to the lady that came to see me, "Oh, like I, I just simply said, God, I wish I, I just want to end it all." It was yeah. just a, an expression. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, the freaking yeah. psych team came. So <laughs> yeah. I can't even imagine what yours must have been like. So. Why when I when I was yelling out for a day and no one yeah. was answering and you think I got to the point this is where my PTSD kicked in and I was literally thinking to myself okay I've seen this in movies this is where people disappear yes this is where and no no one no one knows where I am and so yeah. after after yelling out for a day and just when they came to give me my food I was like can I spare I, why am I here I just kept asking why. Why am I here? The two sandwiches that I got a day of, and they just drop it and then they go. And then I just did, kept did yelling. You know, it, was, do you know what out. that guy said to you, though, that you'll come back? Did that come yeah. into your mind? No. I thought I was going to, I thought I was going to disappear. Right. I did it like, it's, a, it's, when I say you, once you're behind that door. Yeah. There's, well, that's the thing. Like you, were scre- you were screaming, I was thinking, if you're screaming out for someone. I was that's yelling out for help. A- it gives them, know, but it also gives them evidence that you're, you know, screaming out all day. They, in their head, they're thinking, well, he's screaming out because he's in the mental health ward. Yeah. Yeah. So no one's actually talking to you just to. No. No. I'm a little bit shocked at, like, do you, like, do you think that that's wrong? Of course you do, but like, I'm a well, bit shocked that there doesn't seem to be any care. So when 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 they finally did come back, yes, um, they there's a, a room that they you go. It's a glass room, so it's all like you know, so you don't hurt yourself, you know, mm. if that's what they're thinking. And so there's a glass door. They they took me into that, you know, outside the outside the, the cell I was in. And then five prison officers were standing behind his rip warden or his supervisor. And he's like, I said, why am I here? And he goes, you know why you're here? I said, no, I don't. I don't know why I'm here. Just please put me back with. I'm I'm like in tears. Like I'm really yeah. distraught. Like I'm breaking down. I'm I'm having a nervous breakdown. Like. I said, I don't know why I'm here. Please just tell me why I'm here. Can I go back with everyone else? Just put me back with everyone else. Yeah. Because you want to kill yourself, don't you? I said, no, I don't. I never said, I don't want to do that. No, I never. I, I've never said that. Because you want to fuck it. Like, <gasps> I can feel, I can feel his nose on my nose. He goes, and just pointing at me, like, yes. right in my head, screaming at me. He goes, you want to fucking kill yourself. I said, I don't, I don't, I don't. And I'm just, I'm just losing my mind. And this is Friday. So, you know, I, he goes, he's like, he's sort of, after I kept saying no, he's like, he slipped back, he goes, oh, okay. I said, C- can I please, please go back with everyone else? I just want to go back on to the main yard. And he's like, no, you're going to have to wait here for the weekend. <gasps> and so he threw me back in there and, you know. So that was like deliberate torture. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know what the method is behind it. Well, because funnily enough, I interviewed a prison, someone that works as a prison ward, a guard. Yeah. and. In that interview, not to say that you know he's wrong, I yeah. got like a totally different image of what was happening. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know, we're all doing this correct. So, I look, I'm not undermining that, but it's sort of like, you know, I can't even imagine what it must be like for someone who has done something really bad. Do you know what I, I mean? Will, I will go as far as to say, is like, I've got a lot of respect for police, yes, like, I have got it, I've had recent journeys that have just I praise their work you know they, it, what what the lawmakers are doing they're making the right decisions in how they handle people in the public mm. um to an extent like for me anyway and you know what what I mm. went through um but it, 
I will go as far as to say prison officers are a different breed of people. Yeah. Well, that experience to me, right, may, could could have made you go into that, you know, post traumatic stress because you know it you did. didn't know why you were there. And so the you know if they think that that's helping you, that could no. be you know you keep describing it as this hell dark place. I mean that that explains a lot of stuff why why guys end up going back because it sort of breaks them. Well, like I said, you think you're a piece of shit and you want to go back, right? Okay. Because it's you're accepted. In, in that moment of distress and distraught and whatever you, you go through, right, um, whether it's, you, you, you know, you're looking forward to it or not, you're accepted into a brotherhood that look after you, mm. you know, because it's very much us against them and I can see that, you know, that, you know. And I, that, I, I can understand. It's like a community, isn't it? It's a community, really. Yeah, that's right. So, so in but, the mental health ward, I'm guessing that that doesn't exist. No, you, you kept by yourself away from everyone. I heard did someone, you hear other people screaming? Yeah, yeah. I I heard people screaming. I heard someone la- like that. He had that Joker laugh, oh, and he yeah, was doing man. that for hours, like yeah. hours. It was actually it did. I'm just like I can't imagine what he's going through. And look, mm. some people do need may need to be in solitary confinement, but when it's a simple point of you know. What well, happened with yours me? Is, yours is an error was, in communication. Yeah. So was it, were they, did they try? Were you medicated in there? No. Yeah, which is probably. I had no access to medication. Nothing like, yeah. you know, yelling out for even the next day and so forth, saying, you know, hello, is anyone there? You know, there is a camera in that one, but yes. um, yeah. you know. I, like no one answers, and you don't know if you're you're alone. Or, yeah. you, know, or... you know, you know the scary thing, right? Is that you know the world is trying to be more evolved about mental health, but what you're describing is if you bring it up because you're transparent, it works opposite in there. It's yeah. like you're punished, you know. Versus, you know, if that well, guy was at your face and he was saying, you know, in the way I felt like he was trying to get you to say no and to shut up rather than to talk about it. So it's a weird sort of thing that happens. Well, it is. The prisons are overrun. Like, it is what it is. Like, you know, mm. if that's the way they've got to deal with things so people don't. I know, but was I, there a, did you end up seeing a therapist? No. The, like, only, you... the, only ther- the only person I got to speak to when I was comfortable to speak to someone was they've got, um, well, when I, went, when I moved to Fulham, um, uh, they've got uh, priests and nuns. Yes, I, I heard that. So, you know, you can go and speak to them. And at that time, I just said to them, look, no one knows I'm here. I've been here for so I don't know anyone's number because mobile phones, you don't know anyone's yeah, yeah. number anymore. So, you know, I don't know anyone's number. And even if I did know someone's number, I was that distraught and that distressed. I couldn't think of anyone, any yeah. numbers. That's the point. So she goes, look, give me his details. And they're not... I don't know if she say this. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I know what you're going to say, but the thing is, it's like, did anyone? Did you find that anyone was wondering where you were when you? Yeah, got out? like when when I got out, I was. Pe- my flatmate kind of had an inkling that's what happened. So you just vanished, and your flatmate didn't even. I know just where vanished. You were. Yeah, no one wow. knew where I was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, like, I feel like you know, I really feel sort of bad in a way because I feel I could tell that I could see it in your face that this is bringing up a lot of. You know, I could see that when you're talking about it, it's, it, I get it. And so, please don't, don't go anywhere that you don't want to go because I can I can feel it myself. When you, you know, I put a lot of I put a, a few things to rest in yes. therapy with yourself. Like, mm-hmm. um, so I've I'm at peace with it now. Okay. Like before I started doing therapy on this, I was at a point like there was a a movie that came on. And I, I came on TV, and it was about a mm. guy in the military, how the government, had, 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 you know, put him behind behind bars. I can't remember. What, I don't know what the movie's called. But as soon as I really got realized what the story I was about, I'm in the car and I'm hyperventilating, going, <gasps> and I start. I can't. Whenever I talked about it, I would start hyperventilating, crying, like thinking, "Oh my god, I'm going to disappear." Like I was back there where I was. Like you mm. know, I couldn't. I was very debilitating. Like it's sure. just. Yeah. So, do you think that that helped you? I don't, again, I'm t- I want to hope it did, mm-hmm. but it's a terrible. Hope. But do you think it helped you to help to be where you are now, or do you think that meeting your partner is what really helped you? Did was the experience? Say you didn't meet your partner. Yeah. Do you think that your experience there was a good thing? Do you think being in prison gives you? You know how they call it rehabilitation. No. Yeah. 
Is it? Does that happen? No, no. There's no no form of rehabilitation at all. You learn in you go. You go, when you come out of prison, you've learned how to become a better criminal, and you've got so many connections. You've got you know, yeah. Um, but from what I've heard, like my mind, are who I, um, someone who we had mutual friends on the outside. We ended up in the same unit, um, and we just started talking and things like that. He's like, you know, this person, and so forth, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, um. So, you know, but, and then the people I met through him, you know, it was just so like. So the experience, isn't it? Yeah, look, everyone's in there for a reason, like, and, you know, you, the people who don't want to be there keep to themselves yeah. and who just, and that's what I did. I just kept to myself, like, you know, you've got the the, the drugs that they get in there. I was going to ask like you, the drug, like, so they yeah, so it's not like what you get out Were they here. offered to you or were they? Yeah, yeah, just, oh, yeah, it was offered to me every day. But wow. if you get, you say they do randoms, and if you get, if it's in your system, then you prolong your stay. I just wanted to do my time and leave. Yeah. So I would, I just, you know, put my head down and didn't make yeah. make any trouble. That stuck to what my mum yeah. told me, and I I survived. You know. Yeah. I mean, and, and again, I really do believe that you probably have a book or something, and you know, this, you know, this is something that people don't really talk about. This. You know, this mm. emotional and uh, spiritual experience of being, you know, that it's like a metamorphosis in a way. But, you know, before we finish, is it, again, what do you think happens with, say, men that are there? I know you may not know, you may have heard, but mm. in a long-term situation, I know from this, my own research and talking to other people is that, mm. you know, men that are really strong and really tough and heterosexual, yeah. they, you know, there is, you know, a basic need in sexual needs. And if someone's in prison for a long time, do you, do you have an understanding of what happens to their mind that allows them to flick the switch and not see it as a gay thing? You know, did you hear anything or did you get an understanding of what happens in at a way, sexual level when it comes to men being with other men? No, because I, I, I ended up in Fulham. So Fulham is run by the bikies. So, you know, I in the last couple of weeks that I was there, I started to hear about, you know, learn about, you know, okay this person's gay and all that sort of stuff um but i guess i just didn't want to open that door mm. um you know i i was i was befriended by the aboriginal mob as well they looked after me as well okay so so no one know, really talks about it no one there's look, no because it's interesting don't you think that you got all these men together in yeah. your case you weren't you were sort of like doing the re, you know your rehab and detoxing so you didn't have yeah. you weren't horny but I'm, I'm just curious to know what happens if someone is horny you know, well, like, look, how does that work? Towards the end of it, I did, I did get horny, and I was jack, you know, jacking off and doing that sort of stuff. But like the, I would say if you've been in there a few times, you would, you know, you'd be a bit more. Oh, a long time. To be open, yeah, for a long time, you'd be a bit so more. So, is it accepted? Is it an acceptable thing? Yeah. So, what 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 the consensus is is mm. if you, they don't like people who are in the closet. Okay. Because if you. Hi, like say if some that if you if someone's gay and that and you don't like say the men that you share a cell with don't know, right? Then they've got a problem with it because yes, they don't know it. your they don't know your intention. They might think that you're like you're lusting after them instead of yeah. They so know, that, they want to know the truth. They might think that you're being straight so you can get they can get close to you. Right. I mean, they, they they could get close to you know oh them. God. So it's you know, much, there, there is there it? is that you know yeah okay well if you're gay but you know it's I le I learned it's not an issue at all. It's well, that, it's sort of like I I, 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 I don't think you compare it to is like the Greek culture. Like in some European yeah. cultures, the men can you know they can have sex with men before they get married, and it's no one's that's an eyelid. Because you know, I think that I, I, I look, I'm, I've never been so I don't know. No, I'm only basing on television, but it seems to yeah. be that the needs are met, and it doesn't mean that you're that way inclined. It's just you're. It's like you're surviving. Like you know, you, survival is a big part of it. Well, men go. You go in, when you go into prison. You've got to be a man because mm -hmm. you know you've got to have that. You know, it's if you're going to survive in there, you've got to have that macho. You know, you've got to have that front to like mm -hmm. if someone comes at you. You're gonna be ready to fight, so you've got, constantly got to be on that yeah. guard. You can't really cry or anything, can you? You've got to be like that guy. No, that you, no, not at the all. The guy that you right. heard was being bashed. I'm guessing he must have shown a weakness of some sort. No, he was just he was just like the less stronger person, or the less yeah. person with the less skills to fight. You know. Yeah. Um, and if it doesn't, 
get if as bloody as it gets or you know as hard as it, you see a fight going on if it doesn't get sorted if someone doesn't feel like it's been sorted and they got beaten then it'll finish in the cell and that that will usually mean that you see an ambulance leaving later that day yes but uh, and, now that yeah. i'm remembering now that i'm remembering in relation to sex and things like that so i did connect with someone there when you know i'd been there for two, uh, almost 3 months and mm. i was in um one in Deer Park. Anyway, so something could have happened, but you're not allowed to go in, especially in the, you know, the, uh, in the second prison I was in, it's in Deer Park. You know, mm. it's called the Nuff Nuff unit because that's where the people with mental challenges go and you get your own cell. And so you're not allowed to go into each other's cell. Right. So, you know, someone did come into my cell at one stage and I'm thinking, oh, you know, this could happen. But then the next day he moved. Yes. So, so it's, you know, yeah. I reckon if I, I had I, have gone back there again, I would have been a lot more curious for that sort of yeah. stuff. Well, the other thing is, like, I'm just, what, like, what would have happened if someone that you didn't find attractive approached you and then they wanted it again? That's, again, yeah. I know that the television, because television shows it as sort of like this, you know, you get caught in a corner somewhere and then you're attacked. And so I'm sure that's just for entertainment. I'm sure that might happen sometimes. But what you sort of just said then, I think, is true. You don't really have an opportunity to, to be, you can't escape anything, can you? You know, no, like when so, you watch TV, they always find ways to not be watched. But I think you're always watched with the cameras, maybe. If someone wants to find you, they'll come to, you, you'll you get found. There's no way to run in there. Yes. Um, whether it's sexual or physical or, you know, aggression or a, a vendetta or something like that. Uh, if someone's, you know, if, like, so say, for instance, that guy who was who had, was sharing a cell with a, someone who was beating him up, I heard later on that he got taken care of. Taken care of. So he's if he's gone, he, he got, you know, he was taken care of by the powers that be. So it's very just in there. So if you go in there and you don't make trouble, you get looked after. Like you may encounter, right. like, you know, the, yeah. someone may. So, so, so one guy said to me one time, didn't even know him. Like I'd probably see we seen each other talking, things like that. And he saw, saw me walking, and he's like, "Oh, if you had if you hang around with dogs, you're going to get fleas." Oh, God. And so I, I just heard that. I'm thinking, "Oh no, what the fuck's going on?" But anyway, the minder that I had, who was very well connected, like he was like very well connected to the bike. He's like, he saw me again like a week later, and he was like trying to be my friend. Yeah, like so I, I just, I didn't, ta- I, I didn't realize how well connected this guy was. Mm. Um, but he's very, I, 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 I praise that, you know. And he didn't, he didn't want anything in return. Like he was just yeah. a really good. There's really good men in there, you yeah. know. Well, there must really, be other people that are in the same situation. Yeah, where yeah. you know, you know, there's probably the people that have been there like a it's long a brotherhood. time. But that it's like the people that are in there for the first time, it's sort of like hit or miss, isn't it? If you, you know, what happens to you mentally? You it's, know, some uh, people it's not really hit or miss. It's like you, you, you get, you, it, it, it'll either break you or it'll change you. Yeah. And me, it, I mean, it, I, bro- it broke me. Yeah. It like I came out like, a different person. So you were broken the whole time? Yeah, from the, from the challenges that I got to begin with. And going through withdrawal and all that sort of, you know, crying every day and, you know, going into the psych ward in the first couple of weeks and experiencing all that and just, yeah, just mm. then as soon as the, the, day, the day that I left, I got home and I was, I just went to pick up straight away. And I oh. had to be in rehab the next, the next day and you're supposed to be clean. And I rocked up and I've gone, are you, are you high? And I know. So anyway, oh, so, <laughs> and, and I, I only lasted there three months that time. And like, I, as soon as I left there then, because you're made to confront things in rehab, you know, that's where the hard work is. That's where the rehabilitation is actually. And so I got my flatmate to pick me up three months later and on the, <laughs> I didn't even get out and shouldn't be saying this, but I, I as soon as we get, as we got out of the gate, as we got up the road, I got where, where's the pipe? Yeah. You know, and he because I knew he always had it on him. Yeah. So I and, and I so I, and so, so do you, like what do you think or what do you say to that guy, that version of you? How do you? But you know, if you had to talk to him, 
You know, because I know that I know that you're a totally different person. Like I, you know, one yeah. thing that I think I've realized talking to you today is that you, you know, you have this sort of un, you know, you know, like un, what's the word? It's um undebatable. You can't everything's gonna be fine. But the thing is, what I'm hearing now is that you have this gratitude now. And so when you probably go into an experience where you might, you know, being in a cold cell, being only fed twice a day, mm. some people hopefully I think that would you know, change someone. So I can feel the gratitude. I know the partner helped you. Do you think yeah. that, that you know, if you knew, if your partner was around, do you think that you would have done the same thing when you got out? Well, the difference, I, the, dif- the only way I can describe that is the difference between before and after prison Yeah, is before a prison, I was a boy. After I, I was a man. Okay. And now that you're, like, you know how there's all the things, records and all that. How do you feel, even though you're in a really good mental state and you're really positive and spiritual now, yeah. what do you think this has done to you? Like, do you think that this is, you know, do you, do you feel like you can break free of that to be the version that you want to be? Or do you think it's always with you? Oh, yeah. It's hard... so it, like, what, the trauma? Well, every, you know, like, it's sort of like how the, what the public think, getting having a record, the trauma. I mean, there's... I still am really shocked that that you don't get support. Like I feel like you go in and they tell you to leave, and then that's it. It's like I if I like, didn't if I didn't meet my partner, I'd be dead by now. I know. Like, are you surprised but, so though that saying, that wasn't that, that that wasn't in place? No, no. I like oh. when I left prison and thinking mm. I was a piece of shit and I want to get it. And I was I th- I by that point I thought okay, well I've been in prison. Like if I go back, I don't care. I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing for the rest of my life. Like, you know, I'll just right. I'll end up back there in six months, whatever, whatever that looks like. But um, like the only reason, well, one of the biggest reasons, and yeah, my partner is a big reason I'm in where I am today and I'm doing what I'm doing is, but because I've been to rehab before, you know, I know what I need to do to get clean and things like that. So, you know, I guess the path I've walked has sort of given me those sorts of skills. Yeah. That skill set. Well, the but, thing that I again, the thing oh, when I first met you, you would, I remember you telling me how you would go onto Chapel Street and you wouldn't even care or know. But you know, now it's like I don't even know. I can't remember that that version of you that I first met. I don't even see him anymore. It's like you're a different person. So, then, you know, <laughs> you are. You know, you know probably that success stories are difficult. You know, it's difficult to break yeah. free from that. Yeah, and I feel course. like you are. You know, your strength is intense, which is a positive thing. You know, so that's why I wanted to talk to you because I think your story, mm. you know, influences people because people sometimes believe that they can't change. Well, change is possible if you if you want it. Like, mm. and even though it doesn't seem like possible at the time, it's a long road. It's a hard road. Mm. Um, you know, um, and love is but powerful. There's, and there's also there's not enough support out there. Like, yes, in, in my in my journey through especially when I first went into prison, I like, I, I was, I was detoxing from like a 50 mil a day re, G, G habit and that's lethal. So they threw me in prison and I, I slept for like oh. three days. Like I didn't, I didn't wake up or nothing. I didn't eat or nothing. And at one stage, um, they, I heard that they, they thought I, they would have had to take me to hospital. But like I said, once you get behind those doors, when they, when you, they, they did, when you're going to prison, you, you you don't even get to go to hospital. Yeah. Well, the reality is, is that now I realise that the only time that we find out the truth is when someone smuggles the footage. Otherwise, what happens in prison stays in prison. Yeah, <laughs> and it? I'm very uh, yeah, exactly, and I'm very what's like I I kind of th- like, what what I want to do now with my goal, my future goals, and things like that. Like I want to, ch- I don't want to change anything. I want to add ex- I want to do add extra support, but. What the only doubt I've got these days is mm. that if I make things easier for other people, will they get to the point where I am now? But then again, yeah, I but should be dead. You can't, yeah, I, know, I should. You, I should I all I would dead. say to you is that you are uh, you didn't go through what you went through for nothing. All you can do yeah. is be the light. You're not actually going to light the. You can't help. No one can be controlled. You. All you do is, you know, if one person hears this and feels a connection, because, like, you know, when I look at my story, which is nothing compared to yours, like having a breakdown, becoming disabled, that, you know, you have to go through it. And like you said, I think you hit the nail on the head. If you don't want to change, you're not going to. So for you, 
something yeah. just clicked. It was the right time, the right place. And, you know, I can feel the energy of you being a different person, right? So that's, that's the exciting thing because people sometimes think that they, they're stuck, but you're, you know, you're a, a, a product of, of the change. I mean, um, I really want to say thank you because I did not expect it to be that full on. <laughs> like I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna have nightmares <laughs> because it is it's something that you know like if i compare that to when i couldn't walk and you're in this dark place even though mine was at home and all that no one really knows what it's like you can describe it and you can talk about mm. it but you know being in there being in that cell when it's cold and you go yelling no one can really understand what it's like for you and that's mm. the thing that no. you have and you you know you describe again, it in- really well in your situation when, you know, you the struggle you went through, you know, even though it wasn't in a cell, even though it wasn't in a, you know, in the same setting, you know, you could have been at home and not being able to get off the floor, yelling out, help. No, well, I, no I, did, I didn't get out of bed for a long time. And I remember yeah. I had anxiety and I cried and I cried yeah. and I thought this is not going to stop. And I remember one day it just went. It was really yeah. weird. Like, I was just wanting to kill myself. I kept thinking about it over and over again. Yeah. And it was like, but the thing is, is that, that the point I'm making is that going through that, if you don't surrender, you will be, you know, you're, you're a victim. And what your experience is that you surrendered. Something, surrendering means that you let go. And then that's why you're here. That's why this version of you is here. Because otherwise you just, that's why people go back is because they're stuck in that story. Yeah. So it's, that's the thing that's powerful about what you're telling us, you know. Um, and you really are encouraging us not to do anything naughty and go there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, one thing also is that being that I've got a family now and, you know, that my, my and where I am in life now and my partner loved me back to life and I needed, you know, before him I, my sex life was very extreme. You know, and but it was know, very it, drug fueled, wasn't it? Yeah, well, and not just that. But even before the drugs, like it was very extreme. Like I was very, you know, I needed to be not hurt. I just needed to feel something, so it was very physical. Right. Whereas, you know, very shortly after my partner and I got together, it was like, you know, I would have to say to him, "Can you fuck me? I want you to fuck me." And he goes, "I can't. I can't fuck you. I, I can only make love to you." And coming wow. from prison, yeah, I needed that pure love yes to shift something you were you were lucky i was very 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 lucky and very, i'm i the gods, I know, the gods are looking after you weren't they like i've had so many songs <laughs> i'm not talking about like psychic song <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking about that sort of stuff i just i know people who are past in my life are guiding me to work there's that's a different story, yeah. but well, it, it's it, very it, spiritual. Again, it's, it's, very, it's all um, stuff that's happened, but the thing is, is that you just, I mean, you noticed that person at that time because you could have easily have just walked past. Do you know what I mean? Why well, I but was you, very, like, I was very adamant about the next person I was with. I knew, mm-hmm. I, knew I, I knew I didn't want what I had before, and I was very adamant that the next person that I'm with, it's not just going to solely be based on looks. Yes, he's, I find him amazingly handsome and sexy, but I want to make sure that we can look after each other. Yeah. And, it's, and, and that's, that's what I got. The, yeah, that's what you got. I asked for that and that's what I got. It didn't happen straight away. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I resorted to the I fact remember. that I'm going to have 20 boyfriends. I remember, my and, friend. I remember. <laughs> I'm going to have 20 casual sexual partners for the rest of my life. I'm gonna, they're all going to be my boyfriends and that's it. Yeah. I mean, so I think- can I ask you this last question, right? Because one thing that I love again is that you are you've stepped out of the stereo- stereotypical mold of say a gay guy. And so, what do you think? You know, again, I don't want you to be. I don't want anyone to think this is a judgy question, but yeah. you know, I do feel like sometimes there is superficialness in gay in the gayness, right? Yeah. So, what have you noticed about what where you were and where you are now? Like, what do you think caused all that? Do you think it's because we don't support each other, or do you think that there is this? This tendency just to believe that doing naughty things is okay. No, is well, t- I've got t- yeah, yeah. I I totally get what you're saying. Um, so there's in my journey through you know going from wearing heels and you know uh, being you know the typical gay looking crop top, short shorts, all that sort of stuff. And I just still do you know. <laughs> Wear some. That's, a, that's not as often. Like I don't wear nail polish that much anymore. I, I express myself in a lot of ways, but 
I've got five words that I uh, stand by and they're, and one of them is to be sustainable. You know, to, to be sustainable, I can't, I need to focus where I'm going to put my energy. I need, and in other words, to be congruent. So mm. that match your words with what your actions are. I love that. Um, restoration means, you know, second chances. Reverence means deep respect and love, which, and they're my foundations now. And where did you get those? I, where did you find those words? So, through through rehab, through my journey in rehab, they encourage you to create your own foundations. And yeah, they're cool. Congruency is something. One of the headless, he's not he's not with us anymore. He's passed away, but he's um I work with his wife now, and he's just he would always say uh-huh. in the group settings, you know, you're not very you're not being very congruent, and I just, uh-huh. I, I love that word now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when I learned what it meant, it's just like that. That is such a strong word, like you yeah. know. I mean, like, look, look at you, like, from being found in a lake to this, <laughs> you know, like, it just, it's just such a, it's a, it, I love those sort of arts of, you know, you're in a lake, like, and that still wasn't also, enough. Also seeing what, and this is, this is yeah, having a family and meeting my partner, but seeing what my, like, doing it by myself before prison and just having a, you know, living the single life, you know, I did. I was able to to, to detach mm. and just not worry about anyone else. Just worry about myself. Ever since Mum died, it's always been just been me. If I've got, if I've only, I've only got myself when it comes down to it. But when you see my actions and what it does to the people I love, mm. even though my my brother and sister, uh, I think my brother had to move over to the other side of the world to get away from me. But <laughs> he's with his family now. But um, like when you see what it does to other people, and you can't escape that. You know, the last time I went to rehab, I was able, every other every time I went to rehab, I've been able to detach and go, I'll leave everything behind. But now I've got these four souls like right there. Yeah. And just saying, you know, who I'm responsible for. And I knew I had to go away and do, and do this by myself because mm. even though I'm still attached to my family, this is. It's been the most hardest journey, like journey, but it's the most fulfilling as well. Like, yeah. You know, so. Well, the, yeah. Again, um, I know that you're maybe not seeing what I'm seeing, but you are a very strong person, and that's again, that's you know, pe- a lot of people are vulnerable, but you know, this is the thing that I love is that you know, vulnerability is sexy. People think, oh, it's so weak, you can't tell everyone what you, you know. But this is the thing, like most people hide stuff, and that's why. You know, you know what I mean? Like being like yeah, yeah. being honest and just saying it without shame is so powerful, but people don't realize how powerful it is. Yeah. Um, look, you and I could talk for a long time. I yeah, just want to yeah. say thank you <laughs> so much. Right. And maybe, you know, come back again. Like I yeah, I feel like I'm gonna I need to go watch a prison movie now. <laughs> yeah. look, I've, never, I've never watched The Green Mile, so I might watch that. But um, you know, I, I think thank you so much for sharing your your truth. Thank you. No, I, my pleasure. Like I, I'm, I'm on a journey where I know I'm, I'm 40 now, and when you reach a certain age, you know people listen to you, you know. And I'm gonna, I've got goals to open my own rehab and add, you know, do things what I want to do, and yes. it's gonna happen this year. It's, I've had lot, lots of um, things happen just recently. Yeah, it's just that's good. Gonna you, happen. You're, you're, yeah. you're open and you're. Obviously, I mean, like, I know that you're, oh my doing, gosh, so you're attracting that, that energy. Oh, you have no idea. It's just like everything. When you, when you do it, definitely ways. come back, okay? Definitely, like it, I will, yeah. So it's like, because I really want people to see the journey and how, yeah. you know, you're not just walking, you're not just talking to talk, you're walking the walk. Well, yeah, I've got, I, I just, yeah, I, I need to share, I need to give back. I'm at that point yeah. where I, I need to give back because a lot of people don't survive, like, yeah, I almost didn't survive. So mm. life's not. If it, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. But you, but you did survive. Anyway, Mark, thank you, and we'll see treasure. you. We'll see you again <laughs> soon, and yeah, for sure. Whew, all right, <laughs> all right. But when you've been listening to the Harder Shove podcast, now again, if anything that you heard today has affected you, please be mindful to call Lifeline or to reach out to someone that can help you. Like I'm sure, if you have any questions. Um, and you send them to me, I will forward them to Mark, and I'm sure he will answer them with as much honesty as possible. Oh, love and no, like to all. Yes, love <laughs> and like to all. And, you know, don't forget, everyone, 
Don't stop playing with your shaft. Until next time, bye.